Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason, a Canadian animal inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have severed onto the podcast where we take one character construct from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And uh, by the way, Wolverines exist outside of Canada. Do they? Yeah, you get them in your northern United States. I mean, maybe I was talking specifically about Logan, the Canadian animal. Oh, maybe you were. That's very true. I was assuming that you were speaking to the uh, the, the grand populace of Wolverines. Well, Ashley, as I've already teased, we are talking about Wolverine today, and you may be asking why. Why, Jason? Well, we are staring right in the face of the release of Logan, the third Wolverine movie. Yes, we do live in that universe. There have been three Wolverine three movies. Solo three Wolverine solo movies. Wolverine movies. All right. And if you want to complain about the fact that there are like three Wolverine movies in our universe, you can always find us on Twitter at Jawin for me, J A W I I N, and at Ashley V. Robinson for Ashley. Correct. But, you know. Let's uh let's let's move on into this lesson before we get to the complaining too far because I'm going to warn you right now Wolverine's history is lengthy and it's very complicated and it's very convoluted. Great. My favorite. A lot of betrayals? Uh-huh. A lo- lot of blood? Uh-huh. A lot of hair. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. True. Um but first off Wolverine was suggested by two awesome students that listen to the Mind University here Ooh. suggested by Bianca Alicia and Steven Gibson. So they are going to be our TAs for this lesson. Yay. So they suggested Wolverine, and you ought to be, you're not as cool as them because you didn't suggest Wolverine. It's true. So, all right, so let's move into the first section of our podcast, the 10 Cent Origin. And the 10 Cent Origin is where we take all the basic uh, constructs, creators, first appearances, and stuff you need to know in case you go to that cool X Men cocktail party and someone's like, uh, who's that Wolverine guy? There ain't no party like an X Men cocktail party, I'm That's telling you that. Exactly. Okay, Wolverine was, of course, published by Marvel Comics. His first appearance was a cameo. In The Incredible Hulk, number 180 in October of 1974. Correct. His first full appearance is in The Incredible Hulk, surprise, number (laughs) 181 in November of 1974. He was created by Roy Thomas, Len Wein, the creator who has created everybody, and John Romita Sr. Yes. Very famous (laughs) Spider-Man artist. All three of those artists have created pretty much everyone you love. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now, his alter ego slash real name is James Howlett. Mm -hmm. His species, of course, is Human Mutant. Mm -hmm. His team affiliations have been The Flight, Alpha Flight, Avengers, New Avengers, X-Men, Weapon X, X X-Force, plus a bunch of others that... Eh, we're not going to mention. Okay. <laughs> and his uh, notable aliases have been, get ready. Okay, I'm ready. L- Logan, Logan Howlett, Patch, Weapon X, <laughs> Weapon 10, Death, Mutate number 9601, Emilio Guerrera, Weapon Chai, <laughs> Experiment X, Agent 10, Peter Richards, Macaleth, Black Dragon, Captain Terror, John Logan, and Jim Logan. Great. <laughs> He likes to change his name a lot. This is what I thought I was signing up for with Wolverine. (laughs) His abilities, of course, he is a master martial artist. He can regenerate because he has an extremely powerful healing factor. Mm -hmm. He is an amantium plate skeleton. He is, excuse me, he has an amantium, adamantium plated skeletal Mm -hmm. structure and retractable claws. He has superhuman senses, reflexes, and animal like attributes. And he has extended longevity, which means he's been alive a very, very, very long time. Lucky dog. All right, Ashley, let's move right into the meat cute. And the meat cute is a part of the podcast, of course, that we stole from romantic comedy writing, where we tell you the first time we met a character and how cute it was. Now, Ashley. Yes, Jason. I am very curious. Where did you first meet <laughs> Wolverine? Um, I do. Because you can't say Batman the Animated Series for this because I know he wasn't on it. He wasn't. <laughs> I will have a very similar answer, though, as it turns out. Um, I feel like Wolverine is one of those characters, not unlike Batman and Superman, that um, I had seen and mm-hmm. I sort of knew about, even if I didn't know what he did. Like, I, I, I've seen Wolverine on t-shirts for my entire life, yep. even before we had this. Just co- the image of the yellow costume, right? Yeah, the yellow and blue, yeah, yeah with the claws out. And he's and just kind of slinking over, yeah. I like to call him Batman ears, even though, I don't know so you, what you'd call them, his little mask thing. Batman ears, that's, yeah. that's correct. Um, <laughs> but the first time I, like, I met him and, like, learned about who the character was, was, was X-Men, the animated series. Sure. Uh, as a child of the 90s, that was all we had until the uh, glory that is X-Men Evolution came along. The glory that is X-Men Evolution. I effing love X-Men Evolution. And that's great. Uh, where did you first meet uh, Jimmy James Howlett? Well, I'm going to say that I was very similar to you. Um, I didn't really get to watch the X-Men the Animated Series that much when I was a kid. because it's not that good. 
Well, it hasn't held up. <laughs> As a kid, I, I, I the the few episodes that I saw, I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't have a Fox affiliate anywhere near me where I grew up. Yeah. So well, I man. I didn't have Fox. So I could I came to X Men the animated series like after or it was like well, I got on some VHS tapes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I really came to know Wolverine. In the comic book event, The Age of Apocalypse. That's when, a good one. When he was called Weapon X mm-hmm. because he was one-handed, he had an insane fro, and he had red stripes on his face. That's, yes, uh, correct. <laughs> and he and he was responsible for making Cyclops a true Cyclops by stabbing Scott Summers straight in the eye in that universe. And yeah, I, he's not super nice in that universe. No, he's really mean. <laughs> and there's a there's a point where actually I think it's uh, one of the Kubert brothers uh, – he goes through a sequence where he flies through a blimp and gets burned up and he lands on the ground and he's just like nothing but skin. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, his yeah. stripes are still there. Ah. So that that's really the place that I got to know Wolverine. Cool. Uh, and it's a little bit different, so th- it's that more so than the animated series. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's move into the next section, History 101. History 101 is the main meat of the lesson where Professor Jason is going to teach us everything we need to know about Wolverine. Okay, so before we can jump into the fictional character history of Wolverine. We had to talk about the publication history of Wolverine because Wolverine is a complicated character. And the reason why I say that is because... He's emotional. Well, he is emotional. <laughs> and he's very sensitive. He is. He and likes he, long walks on the he, beach. He loves Tom Hank movies. <laughs> and no, simply because Wolverine is a character that was introduced into the comic books mm-hmm. as just kind of a throwaway character. And then he got added history, added origins. And... Each new writer that sort of comes onto Wolverine either changes what mm-hmm. the previous writer did or retcons it. He's had a gazillion retcons. Yeah, he has a lot of retcons. And there is an in-story reason for that, which we will get to. It'll Great. be It'll be way down the line, mm-hmm. but we'll get to it. Uh, so I, th- I want to talk about a little bit of how they created Wolverine and, and just to give you an idea about what it was like behind the scenes. Cool. Now, Marvel editor-in-chief Roy Thomas, he was editor in mm-hmm. the 70s, he asked writer Len Wein to devise a character specifically named Wolverine. At, and he wanted him to be Canadian, be very short, and have a fierce temper. Well, that pretty much sums up Wolverine. There you go. Right out <laughs> of the gate. John Romita Sr. designed the first Wolverine costume, and he introduced the retractable claws. And he said, and I quote, when I make a design, I want it to be practical and functional. And I thought, if a man has claws like that, how does he scratch his nose or tie his shoelaces? Hence, they're retractable. That's cool. That's like the coolest thing about him. Yep. Now, when Wolverine first appeared in his final cameo appearance in Hulk, uh, Incredible Hulk 180, Mm -hmm. as I said, the character's introduction was ambiguous, revealing nothing beyond his super, he was a superhuman agent of the Canadian government. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, after that Hulk appearance, his next appearance was in 1975's Giant Size X-Men number one that was written by Len Wein and uh, penciled by Dave Cochran. That, of course, is the famous cover where the new X-Men are ripping through the old yeah. cover and they're coming out. It's basically what everybody thinks started the golden age of the X-Men, mm-hmm. as I'm going to call it, even though it was in the 70s. I'm I know. We, we know what you mean, though. Yes. The, the heyday of the greatest X-Men run of all time. Yes. We here at the Mind University accept your term. Yes. So he was recruited to the X-Men in that issue. And Gil Kane illustrated the cover, not Dave Cochran. And he incorrectly drew Wolverine's mask with the larger black headpieces. Uh-huh, the Batman ears. Yep. Now, Dave Cochran liked Kane's accidental alterations so much because he was like, it makes him look like Batman. That is a quote from Dave Cochran. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dave Cochran incorporated it into his own artwork in the actual story. Awesome. So the costume changed with his second appearance. Cochran was also the first artist to draw Wolverine without his mask and gave him the distinctive hairstyle that became a trademark of the character simply because Dave Cochran thought that his hair must look like that underneath the mask because why else would he have a mask like that? Okay, I have a great affinity for the Wolverine hair. That and basically I, looks like his mask. <laughs> right, and I actually think that the uh, contemporary X-Men movies do a really good job at justifying it. Like, Hugh Jackman's hair looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um that's stupid that you would think yep. that. That's very silly. Now, of course, uh, <laughs> after this, a revival of the X-Men followed. And as the series progressed, uh, Chris Claremont came on the book, very famous Heck X-Men yes. writer. And uh, uh, Dave Cockrum, uh, they considered dropping Wolverine 
from the series. Now That's so funny because now Marvel has Wolverine on like seven different teams. And everything. <laughs> Claremont and Cockrum actually preferred Nightcrawler to Wolverine. That is correct. <laughs> that is the right thing to think. <laughs> well, interesting enough, Dave Cockrum's artist successor, a little guy known as John Byrne. Oh, that guy. He championed for Wolverine, later explaining that as a Canadian himself, he did not want to see a Canadian character drop from the team. And John Byrne said that he modeled his rendition of Wolverine on actor Paul Diamato, who actually played the character of Dr. Hook in the 1977 sports film Slapshot. Now, if you don't know who that is, Dr. Hook is a character played by the actor. Uh, uh, um, he, he He's kind of like a crazy little character in that. Anyways, John, sure, sure. John, we'll Byrne, John Byrne was a favorite. Go Google. <laughs> yeah, homework. I don't want to I don't want to turn this into the Slapshot podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, John Byrne also designed a new brown and tan costume for Wolverine, but retained the distinctive Cockrum hair cowl. I like the brown and tan one because it mimics an actual Wolverine's yeah. markings. I think yeah. that's really cool. Now, before we get to Wolverine's actual origin and the beginnings of his fictional life, let's talk about how the comic book origin was written because it wasn't revealed until like 20 to 30 years after he first appeared in comic books. Yes. Now, originally... Len Wing, co-creator of Wolverine, originally intended for Wolverine to be a mutated cub. This was like kind of a rumor that had gone around Weird. the comics industry. It was later proven false. Len Wing said that I never thought that. Mm. Uh, um, you know, uh, he completely denies this. Um, but he did say, while I readily admit that my original idea for Wolvie's claws was to extend from the back of his gloves... I absolutely did not ever intend to make Logan a mutated Wolverine. I write stories about human beings, not evolved animals. There you that go. Is a, that is a quote from Len Wein. Well said, Mr. Wein. Uh, later, Wolverine creator John Byrne stated in both interviews and on his website that he drew a possible face for Wolverine uh, that was completely different from uh, a, a, a mask because he thought that Wolverine had never been unmasked and then he later learned that David Cochran had already drawn him unmasked in X-Men number 98 in April of 1976. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, later, Byrne used this drawing of the face that he did for Wolverine for the face of Sabretooth, the long-standing oh. villain of Wolverine. Basically, the Wolverine Joker. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, interestingly enough, Sabretooth actually first appeared in an issue of Iron Fist! Remember I that guy? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he was actually an Iron Fist villain. Interesting. That was uh, corrupted into the X-Men universe. I say corrupted <laughs> very purposely. <laughs> okay. Uh, John Byrne actually uh, introduced and drew Sabretooth like that because he could conceive the idea of revealing that Sabretooth was actually Wolverine's father. Oh, well, it doesn't change that much. Nope. Together, uh, Byrne and Claremont came up with Wolverine being approximately 60 years old, having served in World War II after escaping from Sabretooth, who was approximately 120 years old. <laughs> so both of them were kind of on board with Sabretooth being Wolverine's father. Uh -huh. But to be actual with you, none of those origins happened because none of them got to write the origin of Wolverine. The origin of Wolverine came in the early 2000s in a comic book series called... Origin, yes. written by Paul Jenkins. And now we can finally jump into the fictional comic book history of Wolverine. Woo, that's what I'm waiting for. All right, here we go. I'm excited. Wolverine's life began in Cold Lake, Alberta, in Canada, sometime between 1882 and 1885, mm -hmm. a couple weeks before the 19th of April. Now, Ashley, uh, um, I don't know if you are familiar with Cold Lake, Alberta. Um, not it, not really. Not particularly. <laughs> okay. Uh, how how it, it is a real place though. I will tell you that. Okay. It's not a fake Marvel. Well, what place. is what is, what is Alberta like for people that that have not been to Alberta, Canada? Uh, well, I've never been to Alberta. Okay. <laughs> but I have been to the uh, I've been to several adjacent provinces, and it is uh, Alberta is where the prairie meets the mountains. Got it. It is where uh, the territory kind of tends to change. It's very cold. Okay. And, Which would fit, um, with, fit with Wolverine. And it is where all the dinosaurs come from. Oh, interesting. It's a lot of dinosaur It's where a lot of bones. fossils are found. And so there's ah. a lot of oil there as well. And speaking of fossils, let's go back to Wolverine. Yes, let's. Uh, the mutant who would become the known uh, simply as Logan was born as James Howlett, the illegitimate son of Elizabeth Howlett, who was married to John Howlett, the owner of a large estate, and the Howlett's groundskeeper, Thomas Logan. So Logan 
or James Howlett, is mm-hmm. the son of Elizabeth Howlett and Thomas Logan. Mm-hmm. Okay, now Thomas Logan worked for John Howlett. Yes. As a boy, James was notably frail and prone to bouts of allergic attacks, and he was largely neglected by his mother, who had been institutionalized for going crazy after the death of her first son, John Jr., in 1897. Wow. James was constantly under the pressure of his grandfather, Mr. Howlett, who believed that James required constant punishment by a strong hand in order to be raised properly. Mm -hmm. Now, James spent most of his early years in the Howlett estate grounds with two playmates that lived at the estate with him. Rose O'Hara, a redheaded Irish girl who was brought in from town to be a companion of young James, and a boy named Dog who was actually Thomas Logan's son and James' Mm half-brother. Now, the children were close friends, but as they they reached, you know, their teenager years, the abuse, excuse me, the abuse. (laughs) I'm not trying to do a Canadian joke. I actually just mispronounced the word. Uh, The abuse inflicted upon Dog from his father warped his mind. Mm -hmm. Dog made some unwanted advances towards Rose, which James reported to his father. And in retaliation, Dog killed James's puppy, leading to the expulsion of Thomas and Dog from the estate. By the way, did I forget to tell you that Rose is red-haired like a certain other member of the X-Men? You did not forget. I'm just making and sure. And I noted that. Don't, you want, don't want you to forget that. Yeah. Now, Thomas, after being fired in a drunken stupor and armed with a shotgun, invaded the Hallett estate with his son and attempted to take his former lover, Elizabeth, with him. Now, John Sr. attempted to stop Thomas, and Thomas shot him in the head in cold blood. James had just entered the room when this occurred, and his mutation finally manifested. Bone claws extended from the backs of his hands, and he attacked the intruders with uncharacteristically animal-like ferocity, killing Thomas and scarring Dog's face with three claw marks. Already an emotionally disturbed woman since the death of her first son, Elizabeth saw this, became completely unhinged, drove James away, and then took her own life with the same shotgun. Everybody who Wolverine loves dies. Uh, that actually is going to be a recurring theme, <laughs> so get ready for it. I'm so ready. Uh, now, Rose fled the estate with James in tow, hiding in a shed, and James experienced his heightened sentences for the first time, telling Rose that he could smell apple dumplings from far away. Aww. Dog falsely reported to the police and James's grandfather that Rose had murdered John Sr. and Thomas. And Rose led James to his grandfather's house, but Mr. Howlett simply ordered them to flee by train. Rose then fled the estate with James, who appeared to have been deeply traumatized by what he saw. I mean, like, no, no doubt, right? Yeah, for sure. And his healing factor had somehow eventually driven the trauma from his memories, leaving him partly amnesiac to the events that had just happened. Ooh, can't wait for more of that. Yeah, so his brain was protecting him from the pain. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, James and Rose later found themselves in the Yukon territories of Canada, Hey, taking refuge in a British Columbian stone quarry under the guise of being cousins. James also assumed the name of Logan in Uh order to hide his identity. So the first time he ever got known as Logan. Now, months pass. Many months. Yep. In his adulthood, James came to resemble the appearance of the groundskeeper, his true father, Mm -hmm. uh, much closer than, you know, his legal father. Yes. Logan became a valuable and admirable figure amongst the small community of miners, and due to his hard work and strong ethics, he earned the respect of his peers and the love of his foreman, Smitty, who had become a surrogate father to Logan. Aww. Now, during this period, Logan began developing strong feelings for Rose, a redhead, that will plague him for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but he could not act on them because they couldn't give up the guise of them being cousins. Yes. Now, Spitty, uh, I mean, Smitty, excuse me, who had been mentoring Logan for all these years, had actually grown close to La- Rose, and the two eventually fell in love and became married, much to the scorn and complete surprise of Logan. Mrs. Rose Smitty. Yep. Uh, who eventually accepted the situation for the sake of Rose's happiness. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile... Logan's grandfather, Mr. Howlett, was failing in health and asked Dog to find Rose and his grandson so that he could make peace with them before he died. That's nice. Dog agreed. However, Dog, who had become a physically formidable man himself, decided to track them down so he could kill Logan. Dog hunted Logan and Rose down so easily that it kind of seemed like he had maybe a uh, pre-natural skill for tracking. You know what I'm saying? Hmm, I think I might have indeed. Dog finally found and confronted Logan. Dog reminded Logan as his past as James Howlett and the fateful night back on the estate that had changed all their lives. And the two fought fiercely in the middle of the street. And despite being the physically stronger of the two, Dog was eventually overpowered by the the 
animal ferocitous meanness of Logan. Mm. As Dogland conscious, Logan unsheathed his claws for the first time in public to the shock of everyone watching and was about to deal the death blow when Rose leaped in to stop him and accidentally became impaled by his claws. Everyone Wolverine loves dies. Yes. Horrified, Logan held her in his arms as she died. Stricken with the grief and the guilt for the death of his first love, Logan fled into the nearby woods where he lived in a self-imposed exile in a feral state with a pack of wolves for months, if not years. It is actually unknown how much time he spends with all these wolves. That's so crazy. But, you know, wolverines as an animal are pretty vicious, so I bet he can hold his own with some wolves. There you go. And that's the end of Origin, the miniseries that revealed Wolverine's origin, of course, if you Mm. couldn't tell from the title. (laughs) Now, an interviewer once asked writer Paul Jenkins, if Dog Logan, the character that I mentioned, uh, was Sabretooth. And Paul Jenkins said that he had never intended that to be but he actually said that he was like, I have no problem with another writer turning mm-hmm. dog into saber tooth if that's what they want to do. That's so interesting because I remember reading that story and thinking that it was obviously saber tooth. <laughs> Everyone did. But at the end of a future miniseries called Astonishing Spider Man and Wolverine, it has shown that Dog and Victor Creed are not the same person. Incorrect. As Dog is teleported to the 20th century at one point. Now, you are incorrect. Um, I agree Dog should have been Sabretooth, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there is a sequel to Origin called Origin so 2, two yeah. written by Karen Gillan that confirms the identity of Sabretooth in Wolverine's life. Mm. So, but I agree with you, Dog should have been should Sabretooth. Should have been Sabretooth, All right. Yeah. Now, this is the one, as I said, that involves Sabretooth. Okay. Um, it's an okay story. Um but only read it if you just need more Wolverine. Mm. By 1907, we're now there, Logan had found a family of wolves, as I said, and he'd been running as part of their packs. He began suppressing the man beneath the instincts of the animal, and Logan sort of found a manner of peace living with the wolves. Cool. But Nathaniel Essex came into his life, and who is that, Ashley? Uh, that's a great question that I don't know the answer to. We have mentioned Nathaniel Essex a couple, <laughs> uh, uh, a couple times in Geek History Lesson History. And Nathaniel Essex is the real human name of X-Men villain Mr. Sinister. Oh, yeah. I Mr. Sinister, also that. rumored to be in Logan, the third Wolverine movie. Uh, and, and Miss Sinister is, of course, uh, an X-23 staple. Interesting. So. Interesting. Interesting. Basically, it's all right. <laughs> Basically, Essex had an experiment that was a bear that killed Logan's wolf pack and forced him back to civilization. A circus promoter named Hugo came to the north with a brother and sister team named Saul and Clara. They were his tracker and animal trainer, respectively. Mm. And their skills allowed them to locate Logan. And when they located Logan, Logan became what every Canadian dreams about becoming a circus attraction. You know us. <laughs> Um, but now, I, now it's like Cirque du Soleil level stuff. It's much, it's yes. much more highbrow. Uh, but Nathaniel Essex didn't give up. Essex lured Hugo and Logan to his laboratory to authenticate his wild beast man specimen. <laughs> Essex killed Hugo and began experimental torture sessions on Logan to study his healing factor, including doing a full vivisection on Wolverine while he was awake. Ew. It's pretty gross. That's terrible. Clara convinced Saul to help her rescue Logan, and the three of them escaped Essex's lab together. Clara then spent the next month teaching Logan to behave like a man again, but the relationship made Saul jealous. So Saul sold their location to Nathaniel Essex. And when it appeared as if Clara was killed in the crossfire of Essex coming in to capture Uh Wolverine, uh Saul and Logan joined forces to kill Essex. But Clara and Saul were also mutants with healing powers. And when Clara woke up and tracked them down, Saul's misdoings were revealed and Logan was furious. Ignoring Clara's pleas, Logan drowned her brother in one of Essex's vats. And Clara rejected Logan after that, retorting that the man inside of him wasn't worth much more than an animal. Now... Logan never learned that Clara Creed told her older brother, Victor, about their younger brother Saul's death, Mm. prompting an obsession of Victor Creed's that would last lifetimes. Now, just in case you didn't put it all together, Ashley, who is Victor Creed? Sabretooth. That is correct. So these were Sabretooth's younger sister and brother. Interesting. It's funny because their names are Clara and Saul, so I'm just imagining Clara from Doctor Who and Saul Goodman running around with Wolverine. Well, I will say that in this (laughs) miniseries, uh, by the way, both these miniseries had the same artists. Uh, Oh, that's cool. Saul is drawn 
basic. He looks like Sabretooth. Mm-hmm. And they're both blonde. Yeah, as one would expect. Yeah. Interesting. So, now, alone again, Logan wandered back out into the wilderness, but he could not return to the wild as the animal he once thought he was. Around this time, Logan, like, became a player. He met and fell in love with so many women. And unknown to him, actually, he actually fathered a number of illegitimate children. Which will come back to haunt him. Some of them will, yes. Future storylines. Some of them will, yes. Now, Romulus... He was an immortal mastermind and ruler of the wolf-like lupine Mm -hmm. who had taken interest in the Hudson line, which, of course, is, uh, um, you know, Logan's mother's family. Yes. And over the coming decades, he would directly or through proxies, of course, add and alter and erase Logan's memories to suit him. Now, I'm bringing this up because Romulus is going to pop up into Wolverine's life several times. Okay. But I'm going to tell you right now. Lo, uh, R- Rhymus, excuse me, is a retcon. Ah. He is a retcon character that basically tries to convince Wolverine that he is descended from a race of humanoid wolf people, and he's trying to be like, "Look, I'm the boss of all the wolf people. I control your entire life. You should follow me." He'll show up again and again and again. But to be honest with you, I really think Romulus is lame. Yeah, and he I, sounds lame. And. He is a retcon that I think is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The fact that one – you're saying that one man did all this stuff to Wolverine's life? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's too convenient. It is very convenient. But he's in these stories, so every once in a while he's going to pop up again. True. But basically Romulus is supposedly responsible for everything that's ever happened in Wolverine's life. All right. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Uh, apparently, under Romulus's guidance, Logan became a mercenary in Madripoor. Sometime later, he met Chang, a businessman working for the firm of Landau, Luckman, and Lake, my favorite interdimensional company yeah, that I've mentioned true. several times, on his first trip in Japan. Now, Logan encountered members of the ninja sect known as the Hand, mm-hmm. and the Hand extorted Logan into fighting Sabretooth, who was actually another Romulus operative murdering women in Tokyo. Of course he was. Like you do. <laughs> Logan defeated Sabretooth and thought he was dead and did not know about Sabretooth's healing factor. At some point later, Logan traveled to the another frontier can, uh, community, excuse me, in the Canadian Rockies, and he met a young Blackfoot Indian woman named Silver Fox. Oh, I like Silver Fox. Who he, he fell in love with Silver yes. Fox. And the two shared a cabin together, knitted many sweaters, and lived happily for a time. However, no. on Logan's, Wolverine loves dies. Yep, on Logan's birthday, Sabretooth, possibly under the control of Romulus, if you believe the theory that Romulus <laughs> controls everything of Wolverine's life, <sighs> Sabretooth brutally attacks Silver Fox, raping her and leaving her for dead. The first of many birthday surprises that Sabretooth leaves for Logan. Now, Sabretooth, this is an ongoing thread uh-huh. between them. Basically, Sabretooth likes to show up, kill whoever Logan's with Mm -hmm. on his birthday. That's not a nice birthday present at all. No, he doesn't understand the meaning of birthdays, I don't think. Or astrology. Yep. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you thought that was funny. (laughs) Now, Logan, of course, became enraged. As one would suspect. And he battled Sabretooth in a bar only to be defeated and left for dead. Sabretooth then manipulated a feral and mindless Logan into believing that the people of a nearby town had actually ordered Silver Fox's death, prompting Logan to slaughter the inhabitants of the town and persuading him that the townspeople are afraid of you. They don't want you around. So they got rid of the one thing keeping you here. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is a, more of the manipulation of Wolverine. You're going to notice there are a lot of themes in Wolverine's life. The women die... And Wolverine can be easily manipulated. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Later, employed by Hudson's Bay Company as a fur hey, trader. that's a thing. Yeah. He was a fur trader to the Blackfoot Indians. Uh, Logan defeated the demonic snake worm known as the Unsigila. Yes. I, I'm, I'm guessing the pronunciation of that. A feat which earned him the Blackfoot warrior name of Skunk Bear. Or Wolverine. Slash... Wolverine. That's right. I remember that now. Yep. And that is the the origin of his name as the Wolverine. I did not know Wolverine was also called Skunk Bear. I wish he was just called Skunk Bear. Marvel presents Skunk okay, Bear. Okay, if I was drawing, or if I was writing like a kid, like a like a, a little kid Wolverine, would you ever I, would, call him Skunk I would Bear? call it Skunk Bear. That's uh, so funny. By the way, I did not know that before doing research for this lesson, and that's probably the funniest thing in this lesson, that you can now call, go around to your friends, everybody, and say like, hey, 
Are you excited for the Skunk Bear movie? Oh my god, if I ever write X-Men, <laughs> copyright, Geek History Lesson, I am going to have someone call him Skunk, Skunk Bear, Bear in every issue. <laughs> That's so amazing. You could have like one of the little kids, like one of his students, be like, ah, oh, shut up, Skunk Bear. Yeah, like a Franklin Richards kind of thing. Well, actually, um, do you know what isn't skunky? What? Helping Geek History Lesson out on Patreon. That is so true. That's right, because it's time for one of our ads. For just $5 a month, guys, you can go over to uh, patreon.com slash jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, and you can help support this podcast. And for $5 a month, a simple $5 a month, you can listen to the Geek History Lesson Extra. It is 15 more minutes of podcasting goodness with me and... And Ashley, and it's a podcast that you can only hear on Geek History Lesson Extra. We will never, ever release those to the public. It's true. And for $3 a month, you can listen to Geek History Lesson episodes early. So we're looking to expand our Patreon this year. We're looking for more supporters over there because the more of that helps us make more shows on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Actually helps us maybe possibly create another podcast. What? What? Throw that out there. And all the products we do. So we thank all the patrons over there. And if you're not a patron and you're listening to this podcast, think about going over there. Even even one dollar makes a huge difference. Patreon.com slash Jawin. And thank you so, so much to everyone who has already donated. That's right. And we also want to throw out a big thank you to World War One because that's the place we're going to next. Awesome. I bet you never heard that before on a podcast. Literally never. Okay. Now, when World War One began in 1914, Logan joined the Canadian Army. Yeah. So did my dad. Not in World War One, though. Good man. Good man. Both both good men. Yes. <laughs> uh, Logan was assigned to the Devil's Brigade, a <laughs> special Canadian was. military unit sometimes used by, guess who, Romulus. Oh, I was like the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if they're in the Army, of course. Yep. <laughs> uh, now, Logan's commanding officer was actually a superhumanly strong man known as Silas Burr, who would later become known as the villain mercenary known as Cyber, a very famous Wolverine villain as well. Yes. Um, who was actually formerly an agent of the Pinkerton Private Detective Agency. I don't know if you know the Pinkertons, the, the, the sort of cops they're, of the railroad. They're Americans. Yep. Uh, now, Silas abused this position, committing several atrocities, even burning down a schoolhouse full of children. He's a bad dude. Yeah, for sure. And after being sentenced to death for his crimes, Burr was rescued from the courthouse by Victor Creed, Sabretooth, Mm. and brought to a facility where he was hired by Frederick Hudson due to his sadistic nature. Mm, Because, you know, that's what you want. Yes. Now, after World War I, Logan went to Shanghai, China, where he intervened in a conflict between the locals and Ogun, who is – Ogun, by the way, is a Japanese soldier, a samurai, and a sorcerer who was impressed by Logan. And Ogun offered to train him in the martial arts, but Logan declined. Ogun and Logan. Yep. In 1921, Logan found himself in the Mexican desert, beaten and locked up by the local police and accused of horse thievery. Mo- He's like, I wasn't even supposed to come in today. How did this happen? <laughs> I don't like horses, bub. Uh, I'm a skunk bear. <laughs> As Logan was blindfolded and tied to a post to be shot by a firing squad, a voice next to him asked if he was a murderer. Logan answered, worse, a horse thief. If he was a skunk bear. <laughs> yep. I'm a skunk bear, it's baby. so funny. And the police, the person next to him actually turned out to be Mystique. Hey. He was about to also have been killed for having blue skin. Uh. The locals actually thought she was a witch. Uh, and even though she explained that she'd been born different, uh, Logan actually laughed at meeting someone like him at the shooting post of all places. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mystique actually managed to untie herself just before the firing squad shot. And Logan survived once again due to his healing factor where he schnickety, schnickety, schnickety killed all the guards. Good for him. After they both escaped, Mystique stood surprised that Logan was actually able to survive and asked how he was able to free himself and escape. And Logan basically responded, I didn't escape. Yeah. And then she asked where he was going to head next. He said to the nearest bar. Yeah. And Mystique, that's a great line. <laughs> Mystique introduced herself to Logan and said that she had a group of friends in Kansas City that he would probably like to meet. Hey, we got some real connections to us personally with this character. Uh, Mystique informed Logan that her and her crew were planning a bank heist and that she wanted him to take part of it. However, Logan didn't like it, so he tipped off the police about the planned bank robbery. Mystique cut and ran, and despite Logan's protests, Mystique's crew were killed by the police. Oh, bummer. Yep, and Logan found himself alone with a feeling of a hatred for a woman that he had come to trust. Aww. By 1932, Logan was in Madripoor again, and a woman known as Seraph 
taught him how to be a better assassin. Around this time, Logan also started to use his recurrent alias known as Patch, mm-hmm. which is, of course, is his sort of gangster alias where he sometimes wears a eye patch. Yes, so. and, and, and it's still prevalent mm-hmm. across X-Men lore. And after this time, he also remembered Ogan's offer, and he went to Japan to be taught self-discipline and martial arts from Ogan. Cool. He spent several years under Ogan's tutelage, and Logan began to actually regard him as a surrogate father. Aw, sweet. In 1937, Logan, under Romulus's order, spent two years learning espionage from Taras Romanoff. Ah. And in turn, Logan gave hand-to-hand combat lessons to Natasha Romanoff, hey. Taurus's ward. Taurus then told Natasha to kill Logan, but Logan instead killed Taurus and allowed Natasha to depart. Now, this as well is another retcon. Mm-hmm. It's a very recent retcon where they suddenly made like the Natasha Romanoff has been like been alive since the 1920s. Yeah. Which I don't like. I don't like it either. Yes. I like her just being a normal human. I don't like her being a superhuman. I agree. So. But people want to do that so they can pair her up with Bucky. A- a- yes. And Logan and people like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I- I- it's it's something that the Marvel Universe does a lot that I'm not a big fan of is that everybody doesn't have to have been alive for the entirety of the, ni- of the 20th century. Right. Like we'll go with the revolving timeline. It's yeah, fine. It's fine. I get it. Captain America woke up in 1991. It's okay. It's super great. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? All right. In 1939, a little war that you might have heard of broke out. That second world war there, right? Yeah, that's right. Correct. (laughs) Not many people have heard of that war. Yeah, it's a minor skirmish. Yes. A a very minor. (laughs) Didn't last for very long. A little land dispute. Uh, Logan returned to Canada's Devil's Brigade. Of course he did. Once again. Not controlled by the Prime Minister. (laughs) uh, Once again under Burr's command. Although his memories of Burr's crimes by this time had already left him. Mm-hmm. In the summer of 1941, Logan worked with the U.S. super soldier known as Captain America dun, dun, dun. and others, a team of others, in order to sabotage an alliance between the Hand and Baron Strucker. Uh, they were trying to lure, lure the Hand's Jonin, their leader, out of hiding. Now, Natasha Romanoff at this time was a new operative, and she wanted to kill Jonin. But Logan, regretting how he trained her to be an assassin, killed the Jonin himself. And later that same year, Logan, under orders to either recruit or kill Captain America, worked with him and Bucky in Tunisia. And during that same adventure, that's when Logan first met Sergeant Nick Fury. Bucky! Now, in 1942, uh, Logan participated as a paratrooper for the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion during the Normandy invasion on D-Day. Cool. As well as the liberation of the Netherlands. During this time, uh, it was also been rumored that Logan was a spy for the Allied forces because he was captured at one point in Germany and sent to the Sobibor death camp in Poland. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, he psychologically tortured three Nazi com- uh, command- uh, commandants excuse me, by simply never speaking and returning every time that they ordered him executed. He'd keep getting out of the giant mass grave. Yeah. Uh, also, while at Sobibor, Logan was known as Prisoner Zero. Now, that was a one-issue storyline that Mark Miller wrote I actually kind of like it a lot that actually sounds like a pretty incredible story that would be creepy if mm-hmm. you like if he's just digging himself out of the grave every yeah. time in 1945 Logan was captured by Japanese soldiers in Japan where he was sent to a prison camp in Nagasaki mm. now Logan escaped from his cell along with Lieutenant Ethan Warren an American soldier who was also captured and they found refuge and love from a local Japanese girl named Atsuko. I was hoping you were going to say from each other. Uh, I would have been really impressed. <laughs> uh, Wolverine is, well, he, he either kills all the women he's with or he betrays them, so he just turned them in. That's true. Uh, but that's go. not true. <laughs> Unfortunately, Lieutenant Warren, who was also revealed as being a mutant himself, returned and murdered the girl. That's rude. Yep. And the two men fought while both were caught in the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that destroyed most of the city. Mm -hmm. Logan survived. The other two did not. And Logan was devastated to have to lose another woman in his life. They all died. So, Ashley, I want to ask you, what is Wolverine's superpower at this point in the lesson? What have you learned? Killing women, apparently. Uh, Getting tied up. Or getting murderized and coming back to life. I guess I would say... And forgetting things. And forgetting things. It's like that thing in James Bond when they're like, what's your hobby? And he goes, resurrection. (laughs) That's how I would describe Wolverine. At at this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure my opinion will change over the course of the lesson. Sure. 
Now, after World War II had ended, uh, Logan, of course, was in Japan, mm -hmm. and he sought redemption in Jasmine Falls, Japan, where he studied with Bando Sabura in order to learn how to be a man and to leave his warrior, his animal nature behind, excuse me, finally at peace since Silver Fox's supposed death, Logan met and fell in love with a local woman named Itsu Akihiro is what I think it's is how you say her name. I'm just going to call her Itsu. Cool. Or it might be Aitsu. I'm not sure. I apologize. And they married and conceived a child together unknown to Logan. This, Logan's got all these baby childs that just show up and are secret. He's got a whole, he's got a whole, uh. There's a whole fleet of wolverines There's a out pride there. of wolverines out there. There are pride of, a pride of skunk bears. <laughs> a pride of skunk bears. Of illegitimate skunk bears. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Hashtag illegitimate skunk bears, everybody. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Oh man, that is such a good, uh, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> we, might, we might put that on a t-shirt. On, on a t-shirt? Oh. Pride of, of illegitimate skunk bears. That is a. Uh, uh, I will wear that publicly to conventions. Uh, everyone out there, I would love to see your tweets. I might actually like. How funny would it be to like see an image of Wolverine and then you see all these little kids all with claws and these bad hair? Yeah, yeah. And it's like pride of illegitimate skunk bears. That's so funny. <laughs> and they'd be like, "Oh, it's Gigasrelus," and I know exactly what it is. I love that. <laughs> all right, so like, t uh, yeah, like uh, tweet us and tell us if you'd like to see that T-shirt. I'll make it. Cool. That sounds really cool. Please tell them you want to see it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so again. Um, as I mentioned, uh, with Itsu, or Aitsu, I'm going to say Itsu. I, I would say Itsu. Um, they conceive the child together. This child, of course, will be the most famous this is of L Logan's child. Can I, can I tell you who it is? Who do you think it is? I think it's Dakin. Um, I will neither confirm nor deny that you might be correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In 1946, mm -hmm. Logan was proving himself worthy of being a, a father in combat. When the demon swordsmith, who could meld powerful emotions into swords, Murumasa, created an explosion that caused Logan to accidentally stab a villager with his claws. Logan was then banned from the village, but wanted to say goodbye to Itsu. And returning to their self-built home, Logan found Itsu murdered by Bucky Barnes, the now brainwashed winter soldier. All the women Wolverine loves die. Yep. Although Barnes ostensibly served the USSR, he was acting under Romulus's orders. Uh. And believing their child to be dead, Logan mistakenly blamed Muramasa, who captured and tortured him. While Muramasa's underlings prepared to dispose of Logan, Romulus uh, killed Muramasa. Mm. And unbeknown to Logan, Romulus took the child from Itsu's womb, and he was safely born and adopted by another Japanese couple. This child was named Akahiro, but eventually turned the name of Dakin. Nailed it. Which means mongrel. Yes. Nine years later, Dakin fell under the influence of Romulus, where he was told lies that his father despised him and abandoned him, filling Dakin with hatred. He is, that, that would be how I would describe him, full of hate. I, we'll, we'll get more into Dakin a little bit more uh, down the line. Uh, Do you like Dakin? He's okay. I like Dakin a lot. I don't, I don't. I'm an X-23 girl, even though I know she's not a Dakin, child. Dakin and X-23 come about the same time. And they are very similar characters. Yes. Yeah, and they do they do cross. They have different claws. It was the big yeah. thing where it was, like, it was very trendy to like give Wolverine characters diff claws in different places. Like there was a character with claws comes out of his ears. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with that choice. Um, but but I understand why you do it. X-23 and Dakin, both uh, part of the pride of illegitimate skunk bears. <laughs> It's just the greatest thing I've ever heard. Oh, I want to. I want that so bad. Um, uh, Logan resurfaced as a mercenary, and it's unknown at this time if he retained his memories of Itsu. Probably not. Now, Logan continues espionage work, becoming a favorite of both America's and Canada's secret services, even teaming up with Benjamin J. Grimm for a time to participate in a Cold War era government mission. Ashley, who is Benjamin J. Grimm? The thing, the almighty, ever-loving, orange, rocky thing from the Fantastic Four. That is correct. And we have a couple awesome Fantastic Four lessons that are amazing. Some of my favorite episodes Ta of the year's Taught by Jason Inman. By 1961, Logan, now codenamed Wolverine, joined the- That took a long yep, time. <laughs> joined the Weapon X program, part of the Weapon Plus program, which had been created to fight the mutant menace. Nevertheless, Weapon X actually only used mutants as superhuman operatives for international tasks, so they were an organization of mutants to fight mutants. Yeah. He was then placed on the Black Ops squad run by the CIA called Team X with Sabretooth 
and Silver Fox, who was discovered that was alive. Mm -hmm. And it was unknown if either Silver Fox or Wolverine remembered their past history at this point. Other members of the team were Maverick, Kestrel, and Mastodon. Mastodon. During this time, Logan and the others received memory implants via stage scenarios and telepathic manipulation by Aldo Farah and other technology. Weapon X also duplicated Wolverine's healing factor and implanted it into the rest of Team X, slowing Mm -hmm. their aging process. And in 1963, Silver Fox betrayed Wolverine and Sabretooth to enemy soldiers, and she fled from Weapon X. Rude. So rude. Eventually, Wolverine left Team X, too. And by 1972, Wolverine joined Department K, which was a secret Canadian defense ministry branch with ties to Weapon X. It was based in Ottawa. He partnered. I lived there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He partnered with Neil Langram and worked with Nick Fury, who was now a high-ranking CIA agent, and also with two CIA agents you might know, Richard and Mary Parker. Oh, I've heard of them, folks. Who are, who are they? Peter Parker's parents. Yes, which many people think were revealed to be CIA agents. Yes. Um, Wolverine was dismissed from Department K after accidentally shooting a fellow agent. Uh, he was also disgusted with himself, so Wolverine was just like, I'm going to walk into the woods and lose myself in the Yukon. Maybe that's his, his secret power. Whenever he gets real moody, he just goes and hangs yeah. out with some wolves. But before he could get to the Yukon and hang out with those wolves Aww. and make more illegitimate skunk bears... <laughs> Logan was pumped full of Thorazine, beaten and kidnapped. Thorazine? Yep. By a group of armed men from the Weapon X project. The men, the man, the men, excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) It's a remix. Well, there there is a character in this that I'm going to talk about in a second that's only known as the Professor. So I was trying to say the man only known as the Professor. Oh, I see. They only reveal him as the Professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the man known as the Professor, Dr. Abraham Cornelius, and Dr. Carol Hines began to examine Logan while he floated in the containment tank. And <laughs> Logan's skeleton, including his claws, were bonded with the indestructible metal known as adamantium, making his skeleton unbreakable. And his personality was then buried beneath the most intense brainwashing he had ever undergone. Now, adamantium, if you don't know, is this metal that's in the Marvel Universe that is, like, impossible to break. Mm-hmm. It's slightly stronger than vibranium, which is the metal that has been mentioned in the Avengers movies that basically comes from Wakanda, the Black Panther song. Yeah, so when your Captain America friends try to fight you on that, they're wrong. Um, Captain America's shield is uh, made out of part adamantium. Yes, but... But mostly vibranium. But people always want to do like, what's stronger, vibranium or adamantium? It's adamantium. Well, it's happened, yeah. It, it's happened several times, like neither one of them break. Yes. They, it's, it's happened. Like his shields will just, his Wolverine's claws will just spark off a of Captain America's shield. Yeah, it's, it's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. But adamantium is stronger. Yeah. The project wanted Logan to believe that he was an obedient animal and that individuality led to suffering and death. Reduced to a near mindless state, Logan was forced by Weapon X to slaughter every inhabitant of the small town of Roanoke as a test. That's rude. Logan proved too difficult for the Weapon X program to control, and after many years, he broke free of the programming, fell into a berserker fury, and escaped the facility with the help of the Winter Soldier, killing nearly everybody except for the Professor, Dr. Cornelius, Dr. Hines, and Malcolm Colcord, who later would become the director of a new Weapon X program down the line. Mm. Driven into savagery by the experiment, Logan wandered the forest of the Canadian Rockies for months, enjoying the vistas of pine trees and moose. I mean, yeah, in the Rockies you'd get some moose, I guess. Wandering the woods, though, Logan eventually (laughs) discovered a couple of other Canucks, namely by the name of Heather and James Mack Hudson, who were a young couple honeymooning in the Rockies, whom he tried to attack, but they eventually stopped them. Now, Ashley, do you know who Heather and James Hudson are. I think they're Alpha Flight members. They are Guardian and Vindicator yeah. of Alpha I was, Flight. I, could, I can see their costumes, but I don't know mm-hmm. the Alpha Flight now, names very at well. At this point, they're not those characters yet. But that's who they will grow up They to will be. become. Yes. Uh, two of the famous, the most famous citizens of Canadians in uh, Marvel. I actually have her action figure. Yeah, she's cool. She's cool. Uh, when he recovered, Logan regained enough of his human per- persona to be horrified at his claws because he acted like he had never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Recovering his mental uh, facilities with the help, excuse me, recovering his mental faculties with the Hudson's help, Logan became a member of Canada's Department H, the superhuman oriented government agency that James Hudson founded. That's right. His full memories remain not restored, and he didn't even recognize former friends or allies when he met them again. He eventually regained memories of Burr, Seraph, Captain America, and other parts of his life, but due to Weapon X intervention and his healing factors, some areas and 
decades of his life were completely blank, including his life with Itsu. Aww. And much of his Team X service years. Logan went underwent ongoing intense psychotherapy to help him control his berserker rages. Mm-hmm. And he accepted deadly and brutal assignments that no other agent would, and he soon rose to the rank of captain in the Canadian Armed Forces. That's pretty good. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that the Wolverine uh, was constantly like, I'm just going to go back and join the Canadian Army. Like, well, he's like, I, I'm familiar with this. This gives me structure and it gives me a mm-hmm. goal. Why yeah. not? After the Fantastic Four's debut... Hudson steered Department H's resources to form a super team sponsored by the Canadian government, and he nominated Wolverine for leadership of the team, which at the time was called The Flight. Mm -hmm. So Wolverine donned a yellow costume, and after some various other adventures and troubles, he became part of the team. And that is the end of part one of Wolverine. Wait, I'm going to be everyone listening on their phones right now. What? Yes. What? That is right. Halfway. <laughs> okay, I was going through the history of Wolverine, and as you can tell, we're we're, we're closing in on that one hour mark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have not even met the X Men yet. We're, yeah, we're a little ways off. We're we're still some years off from the X Men. Like, believe me. So Wolverine is going to be a part two geek history lesson. That is right. So this is part one. Next week, we'll be back with part two of Wolverine where we recover like all of his history up to and through the X-Men up into modern day. And also next week, that's when we'll have recommended reading and the discussion and mm-hmm. all that type of stuff because Wolverine's history, I think, is interesting. Like, I, I there was a lot of this stuff before the X Men that I didn't know. I yeah, me too. I feel like a lot of the stuff I'd heard about in like a throwaway comment, or I'd heard other people talk about, but I haven't read a lot of pre X Men Wolverine yes. stuff. Yeah. All right. So you'll just have to stick around the next week to get the full history of Wolverine. So make sure you subscribe and download this podcast on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And guys, if you go over to iTunes, please leave us a review and a rating because it helps other people find the show in the iTunes algorithm. And that really helps the show. And we thank you for doing that. Now, Ashley. Jason. uh, Some excellent people suggested Wolverine. But if other people want to suggest other Wolverine lessons like Dakin Mm -hmm. or even X-23, where could they do that? They can do that at facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson or geekhistorylesson.com. There's a bunch of different ways to contact us in both those places. And I want to thank again the TAs that suggested Wolverine. Again, Bianca, Alicia, and Stephen Gibson. Uh, they were the awesome people that were like, hey, you guys should talk about Wolverine. And we found out we found out the pride of illegitimate skunk bears because of them. Oh, that's the greatest thing we've ever come up uh, with. So go follow us on Twitter as well, at Jawin for me, J-A-W-I-I-N, and at Ashley V. Robinson for Ashley. And remember, go over there and tweet us, illegitimate <laughs> Skunk Bears, the pride of illegitimate skunk bears. I've got the idea for it already. I think it could be an amazing shirt. Oh, I want it so bad. I think it would be so good. All right. And also, don't forget to head over to patreon.com slash jawin, J-W-I-I-N, to check out our Geek History Lesson Extra because this week we're doing something special with Geek History Lesson, right? That's Ashley? true. What are, what are we doing? Uh, well, because this is the 150th uh, episode. What? I completely forgot. That's Mind right. Mind implants. Memory erased. Ah. Uh, you've been in the Canadian Army for so long. Is your name Itsu? It's not. Uh, where is she? Nor has it. It's probably Silver Fox. <laughs> Nor has it ever been. <laughs> yes. uh, so, so we're gonna. We asked you on our various social medias to ask us a bunch of questions. We are going to answer them. Cool. It'll be a, it'll be a little bit of a different one. It will be more personal. There you go. All right. So don't forget. Uh, thank you for listening. This has been Geek History Lesson Wolverine Part 1. Part 2 is next week. I am Jason. Oh, I'm a part of the Canadian Army in them. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss this Canadian class? I'm the best at what I do. And what I do is make illegitimate children. <laughs> class dismissed, bub. <laughs> <laughs>